ES Audio. Hi, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, should we be worried about the false widow spider? But first, NASA is going to have another go at launching the Artemis 1 moon rocket on Saturday. We now know Monday's launch had to be called off because there were issues with cooling the engines down before liftoff on top of two hydrogen leaks. But engineers reckon they know why that happened and think it's related to an inaccurate sensor reading that they can deal with on launch day. So fingers crossed for a successful blast into space on the weekend. Actually getting to the moon though will incur plenty of challenges itself, including how to determine exactly where on the surface to land. Now, in the case of a manned landing or an astronaut landing, you would not like to have the same situation as occurred with Apollo 11 when Neil Armstrong, at the very last minute, had to decide to land somewhere else. Jan Peter Muller from the Mullard Space Science Lab at University College London has been working on just that, mapping the moon for NASA to help them decide where is safest to land their final manned spacecraft, Artemis 3. They're doing it by taking super high-res pictures of craters on the moon and using AI to analyze them. We're teaching a neural network, AI system, how to relate patterns and shapes and shading to the relative height of the surface. So they're learning how the brightness in an image relates to the height. Peter told us their techniques right now are unique in the world for mapping on such a big scale. We're actually using a gaming computer for doing this because a gaming computer contains a very special device called a graphical processing unit or GPU. And so we're able to do things a thousand times faster than we could do with a normal PC because it's been tuned to work with these kinds of AI algorithms. Now, if you have a spider phobia, look away now. Researchers believe the bite of a false widow spider commonly found in the UK is up to 230 times more venomous than native Irish spiders. The team at the National University of Ireland in Galway found that as well as having super strong venom, false widow also adapts its attacks depending on things like how big its prey is and how much venom it has left. And to make things worse, they found the spider also targets the most vulnerable parts of its victim's body and could explain why they've been able to take out much bigger animals like lizards, bats and shrews. Now, using DNA technology, scientists have solved a cold case medieval mystery which is shining a new light on Jewish history. Back in 2004, archaeological excavations in Norwich found a medieval well which contained the skeletal remains of at least 17 people, mostly children. Analyzing their DNA, the scientists found strong genetic links with modern Ashkenazi Jews, making them the oldest Jewish genomes to have been sequenced. Because of advances in sequencing technology, we are able to do next generation sequencing. Basically allows us to sequence the entire genome of these individuals, which obviously gives a much bigger, broader picture of who they were. That's Dr. Selena Brace from the Department of Earth Sciences at the Natural History Museum. She said according to the study, the findings are consistent with these people being victims of a historically recorded anti-Semitic massacre. We were able to model the dates and the times to actually pin it right down to a time when there were no plagues in the area, no known famines, but there was known anti-Semitic behaviour. In Ukraine, the country's state emergency service has been seen rehearsing nuclear disaster procedures. Teams in protective gear have been using equipment to check over vehicles and civilians during training. They also carried out rehearsal evacuation plans. It follows recent shelling, which has hit the Zaporizhia nuclear plant in recent weeks, leading to Ukrainian officials growing concerned about a potential disaster. Now, coming up, are parents really clued up on parental controls? Why not hit follow and give us a rating in the meantime? Welcome back. Hundreds of people suffering with a superbug which causes diarrhea are going to be offered fecal matter transplants to help them get rid of the bug. It's called Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, and can usually be treated with antibiotics, 
but in some cases it's shown antibiotic resistance. So soon the NHS will offer faecal transplants in various forms, either a pill or delivered through a tube directly into the stomach via the nose or colon. It's hoped the method will save the NHS thousands of pounds. As kids prepare to head back to the classroom, it may be the parents that are in need of a bit more education of the cyber kind. New research by Avast has shown over half of UK parents believe their children are more digitally intelligent than they are. In fact, 63% of parents admitted to asking their kids to show them how to do things online. My son can do things on my device that I've never shown him. And so to him, it's intuitive. But it just goes down to the design of how some of these devices are made. But I do struggle sometimes with like, how have you done that? Or how has he remembered that? Marvin Harrison is the founder of the online parenting community for black fathers around the world, Dope Black Dads. I think it's very much about having a safe way of using it, using reliable browsers, VPNs where possible, making sure their computer is completely updated and their tablets are updated to prevent them from getting hacked. The study also revealed that despite 64% of parents using parental controls on their kids' devices, 61% of them know their child is bypassing them. And finally, researchers have found a new way of studying coral, which involves using a machine you'd find at the dentist. They say using dental scanners, the tech used to look at your teeth can speed up the time it takes to examine coral by 99%. One expert said it has the potential to expand large-scale monitoring of ocean health. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast, where we bring you the latest news and analysis from the Evening Standard. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. Catch you then.